Frequent Miler on the air starts now. Welcome, Nick. Hello, Greg. Great to be here. What's going on? Well, Hyatt now is letting us book suites, including premium suites, online with points. That's new. It's Very great. Big. Or is it terrible? That's right. our main event for today. But first, we're going to dip into the our giant mailbag for feedback time. We need like a little mailbag graphic. With sound effects. I'll have to work on this. <laughs> if you watch it on YouTube, you'll see a mailbag, I'm sure, there, like reaching yeah. in. All I mean, fan mail. right. So as you know, we get piles and piles of piles. fan mail huge every piles. day. So we, we have to drag in this big, huge- big. Millions, bag millions of, of letters. <laughs> maybe multiple bags of, of mail. It, it's, it's a lot like a uh, Christmas movie right. with Santa Claus. Okay, <laughs> so we dig through those, read every single one of those letters, and we pull out one piece of feedback to uh, discuss each week. It's almost like having one, one lucky winner each week that gets pulled out of the mailbag. Crazy lucky. I, when I think about it, that sounds kind of lame on our part that that's all, you know, people. <laughs> <laughs> that's all they get. People are t- t- <laughs> spending all this time. Luckily, there's no one really doing that. So anyway, <laughs> feedback this week is from Steve. He Steve. wrote in response to my post from not this week, but the week before. Mm. where I said, why? There really was no mail this week at all. <laughs> no, this, this was, okay. this was okay. mail this, this week, week about a post from last week. <laughs> okay. So. So, so what, is, what know, did Steve You know the mailman and right. mailwoman yeah. don't, don't, you know, deliver things it's instantly. Always on time. It's not like right. everything's via Takes time. Uh, the internet. It's Patience. Good things come to those who wait. At least, <laughs> at least I hope so. I hope that Steve is bringing us something good. So, so we th- waited this- a week for Steve's feedback. <laughs> This I hope it was in, good. All right, let me talk. This was in response <laughs> <laughs> to why there, there are no 2X Everywhere cards in my wallet. That was uh-huh. my post. That was the right. title of my post. Yep. And in that post, so this, before I get into Steve's feedback, I, I need to give some explanation. So my post was about how I use my Bank of America card, which because I have 100K or more in savings with Merrill Edge, which is part of the Bank of America empire, uh, I get... The total of 2.62% cash back with my Bank of America premium rewards card. And I use that card instead of a card that earns 2x everywhere um, transferable points, right? I could like be using the my Blue Business C- Plus right. or the City Double Cash. Or the City Double Cash, right. And so I have a whole explanation in there why I do that. and and it boiled down to mainly that like I already have enough transferable points. So I didn't want to invest in more of them by giving up that cash. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing I need to mention before getting into Steve's thing is that the blue business cash, which gives you two X everywhere up to 50 K spend per year. Um, it earns membership rewards points, which if you also have the Schwab platinum card and you do, you can, I do, yeah. <laughs> then it's possible to cash out those points for 1.25 cents each. So the Schwab, so the Blue Business Plus becomes a two and a half percent cashback card, essentially, right? Right. right. That's As like background. a floor level, if you've got the Schwab card, yeah. Right. Right. So that's background. So mm-hmm. Steve, and also I'm I'm cutting out just two paragraphs of Steve's feedback because it was it was kind of long. Anyway, he says in Steve wrote. Situation. He waited all week long, and then you're going to cut two paragraphs. <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. Steve wrote. Yeah. What did he say? <laughs> no, I'm giving him two paragraphs and cutting two. out the other stuff. Right? I see. The, I the see. fluff. The Sorry, fluff. Steve. Okay. <laughs> right to the point. Go ahead. <laughs> Steve says, in Greg's situation, I agree with the conclusion here, i.e. to go for the cash. However, I believe that for most, the Amex Blue Business Plus, with the option to cash out at 2.5%, is the better option. Sure, 2.62% is more than 2.5%, but at that point, you're only losing 0.12% or 12 cents on a hundred dollars. So in in a hundred dollars worth of rewards, you're only losing 12 cents. That's not much. That was my little editorial, by the way. And- uh, (laughs) I didn't think Steve wrote that. (laughs) Right, he says, uh, to have the flexibility to use as, uh, so you're only losing that 12 cents on a hundred in order to have the flexibility to use that as membership rewards points, so as transferable points. If you decide you don't, you you won't use them, you can still get two and a half percent back by cashing out. However, in the situation that you do use them for frequent milers value, our 
our uh, reasonable redemption value uh, of 1.55 cents per point for me membership rewards points, uh, then you're getting 3.1% by using the, uh, the uh, Blue Business Cash, right? Blue Business right. Plus, Blue sorry. Plus, yeah. Um, and he says you come out well ahead. So in, in the cases where you use the Blue Business Plus as MR points, you're coming out well ahead. In situations where you use it as cash back, you're only losing a tiny bit. So that's a way of sort of summarizing what he says. Right. That's, I mean, that's a really interesting piece of feedback. I think especially, you know, we had covered something from cafes and alleyways a while back about uh, expected value, uh, kind of a, uh, a theory people use for gambling and that sort of thing. And I think it kind of applies here too, because, you know, when you look at this, you say, well, your expected value then probably is higher than 2.62%. If you're, you know, your best alternative is the two and a half, but you get the chance to get at least 3.1 and probably well more when you transfer to partners that does right. seem like a reasonable strategy however that assumes that greg is going to have a chance at using those membership rewards points for better than the reasonable redemption value which well again he, he's saying for most people for most he people, said he said yeah. it made sense for me but for most people yeah i think that's that's a really strong argument for a lot of people i i think that there's a lot of value in that i i, I couldn't tell him he's wrong about that on the flip side if you know you're not going to travel anytime soon, that 2.62%, you can do something else with. So you can obviously spend it on anything you want. You can also invest it. You could toss it towards bank account bonuses, use, use it to buy points that are more valuable to you for one reason or another. So I mean, cash really gives you the ultimate flexibility in some ways. It's not going to give you the first class flight necessarily uh, the way that membership rewards points would. But I think you can make a good argument for either side. Did he persuade you that most people should go blue? I mean, I feel like he didn't even have to persuade you. You already probably believed that most people should go blue business plus. It, it was, or it was really, plus, right? it was really going um, reacting to your, uh, yeah, <laughs> your statement that, that maybe people shouldn't be going for a two X anywhere everywhere right. anyway. So yeah, it was yeah. really in response to that. Right. And, and, and in response to that, like I said, I mean, I, I can't really set, tell him he's wrong. I, on the flip side, I feel like it is kind of a high price to pay for points, you know, and that's, uh, yes, if you are confident that you're going to use them for better value, great. And eventually someday I will, but I'm also slowly inching my way towards a comfortable balance of uh, membership rewards points and ultimate rewards points at the point where I'm not using them today or tomorrow or next month or next week or maybe not even next year, the way things are looking at the moment. I don't know. So you know, I, I still like the idea of the 2.62%. That we just got the, just picked up the premium rewards card. Uh, we'll qualify for platinum honors soon. So I'll have that in the wallet as well. Uh, and I think I'm going to start using it too. But I, I won't say that most people should go that route. I'll say- okay. I can see using the 2X. You win, it also, Steve. You win. Yeah. Good job, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> it was right. a good argument. So right, moving so on to... Moving on to what crazy thing did City do this week? Well, Except, the answer is whatever crazy thing City did this week... They kept it We hidden. don't know. They, <laughs> <laughs> they didn't even tell us. That, that's what's crazy. We didn't even find out what City did this week. Right, that's, right. You know. They probably did something crazy like informed their agents about whatever's going on this week and didn't I, inform bloggers like us. Right, right. Or they, they finally informed them about something they told us about months ago, but you know, we're not going to know that they finally told them. So I, they did something crazy. I, I have faith that they did something crazy, <laughs> but nothing probably. that we can talk about this week. Right, right. So moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Uh, let's, go, let's go right to the main event. But, but just to give everyone a preview, after the main event, we're going to be going into our new segment. Which, well, we started it last week, but we now have a name for the segment. Mattress running the numbers. Mattress so, running the numbers. I like yeah. it. I like, who came week, up with that one? La well, last week, you'll remember, we, we, for two new segments, we asked for uh, listeners' suggestions. And we sort of pitted them against Kerry, our creative director, to see who would come up with a better, <laughs> better solution. So Billy Chen, via a comment on YouTube, suggested running the numbers. Kerry suggested, she heard, heard that suggestion and suggested expanding it to mattress running the numbers. So up we're, actually, we're actually using both of their hybrid for that it's one. It's a hybrid. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody wins. Everybody's a winner. It's just like going <laughs> it, to the fair. 
And then following Matt just running the numbers, we're going to go into our segment where Nick and I uh, complain about each other's posts, and we have a name for that. It is now called Post Roast. Post Roast? I like it. I like, like Post it? Roast. I do. I like, I like the chance to roast you a little bit. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> now, who All came right. up with that one, Greg? So that was solidly carry. I, you know, I, 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 do, I do seem to remember saying that there wasn't <laughs> enough faith in our creative director last week to come up with some great solution or some great suggestions, rather. And sure enough, sure enough, she did. So yes, I like right. it. So, so the, the person who had less faith in our audience in being creative <laughs> was more right than me, who had ultimate faith, faith in our audience. So, so there you go. There you go. There, you, there it is. All right. So on that note, let's get into the main event. So Hyatt, they came out with this crazy new thing, sort of, and, mm-hmm. and they didn't announce it or anything. This is just something that it, I, I think it was U.S. Credit Card Guide that stumbled on it, right? Is that, or were they the first That's out? That's where I it? first saw it. Yep. First saw it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and so uh, what's going on with it? Tell us about it and, and what we need to know. Yeah. So for a while, for quite a while, you've been able to book Hyatt suites and premium suites with points, and they have different um, award prices for each of those. And where, where like premium suites, which could be anything from, you know, a one bedroom suite to a uh, presidential suite, uh, they the award chart is double what the standard a standard room would cost. So a standard room that costs thirty thousand, premium suite is sixty thousand. And then the uh, a suite, which is generally whatever the, whatever they consider a standard suite, which is generally like, you know, it could be a junior suite, it could be, a, I don't know. Anyway, it depends on the the property. But anyway, um, those go for somewhere in the middle. So it, so a uh, category seven hotel, which is thirty thousand points standard, it's forty eight thousand for the suite. 60,000 for the premium suite, right? So anyway, we've been able to do that for a long time, but in order to book the suites in the, in the past, or even to find if the suites were bookable in the past, we had to contact Hyatt and ask them, say, here are the dates, is there anything available, blah, blah, blah. As a result, that was kind of good because as a result, those suites were almost always available, um, even if the regular rooms were uh, sold out. So that was good, but it was hard to find them because they weren't available online. Now you can not only find them online, but book them online. So it's right there. You, if the premium suite is available, you'll see it in the search results. Same thing with standard suites. And that's pretty exciting. So we already had, for example, one person very excited who had booked my favorite Hyatt, the Ventana Big Sur. She had booked it over um, Valentine's Day for next year and excitedly wrote to say that she was able to rebook it for longer, which she had wanted a longer stay, rebook it for longer in a suite. So of course she had to pay more for it, but you know, she's very excited to, to get that. And I don't right. blame her. Yeah, absolutely. I think she, she'd actually said that it was for like around Valentine's Day, but originally she couldn't actually get Valentine's Day because there wasn't a standard room, but now she was able to actually get Valentine's Day because of the fact that she booked the suite online. So, you know, that might open up opportunities to pick up rooms. We've talked about that in, in the past and said that when there isn't a standard room available, it's sometimes worth sending a message to the Hyatt Concierge on Twitter, or at least it was, to find out if there were suites available because they're often are suites available still, but, um, but, you know, now that this is out there, I guess it's going to lighten the load on the Hyatt Twitter team. Now I say that should back up a second. A few months ago, you were able to book suites at the Ventana Big Sur online for a very brief window. And then they took that back offline for a while. So do we know that this is like official, that this is something that Hyatt meant to release and is going to keep up? Well, I mean, you're right. We don't have anything official from Hyatt, but this, it shows up in a more normal way now. When the way it showed up before was under, um, I can't remember exactly, but but it, it I think it was under paid rates. It it showed up as as a like unpublished fare or something, something really weird. And so you had to click through and then then find the details. So I like the fact that it's now showing up as a tab when you select that you want a points reservation. Mm-hmm. It just shows up. There's a standard you know award tab. There's a um, if if both are available, then there's also a suite award tab and a premium suite award tab. So it's pretty clear that it's, it's pretty, this was yes, intentional, yeah. not, you know, yeah. intentionally designed, designed to be right. in there. 
whether they released it earlier than planned, I mean, there's no way to know, no way to know that. Yeah. But the Interesting. good news is it, because we know it's designed, we know it's intended to be long term, right? right? Right. Not an accident that they designed a system for it. it right. one, one thing that was kind of odd, I thought, I don't know, odd, notable. I don't even know if it was notable. But when I searched for a room at the Park Hyatt New York, the interface looked totally different than the standard ones. So I don't know if I that's... I noticed that. Uh, is, that that's is that the only one true. like that? That's, yeah, that's not true for any of the other ones I've looked at. Okay, so yeah. the Grand Hyatt New York, it had the normal interface. Normal interface yeah. Ventana, normal interface, um, a number of others that I looked at. So maybe it's par- specific to Park Hyatt. Yeah, I don't know. I, I was I was curious when I saw that, but I well, it's not specific to Park Hyatt because I checked the Park Hyatt Mallorca and that was still the regular oh, old okay. interface. So uh, yeah. maybe it's something they're going to move to. Anyway, neither here nor there. Just I didn't like it though. I didn't either. I thought it, I thought it was it harder. Confusing. It was. It was. I, I, I could see why they might have done it though. It, it's more visual, so it's it's it less like a, a boring uh, data display and more like, hey, pick you know what type of room you want. And and then we'll tell you how much it is or something along those lines. But yeah, yeah, it's as far as uh, usability, it didn't seem great to me. But you know, no, but maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it'll make those suites less obvious <laughs> to people and <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> easier for other people to to come by. So I don't. Is this a net win? Is this a net loss? What do you think? I mean, is this a good thing that now we can book some crazy? I mean, you showed in the post that you wrote that you could book the presidential suite at a Hyatt and. Albuquerque for 10,000 points a night. I mean, they're not all going to be 10,000 points. If you want a crazy suite at the Park Hyatt in New York, it's going to cost you 60,000 points. And it's going to really vary. But is the fact that you can get those crazy suites easily online, transfer points over, and it's done, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I mean, I think overall for, for Hyatt members, it's a good thing. I mean, it makes Hyatt a easier to use program, right? You don't need to know the secret trick about inquiring about suite awards uh, with Hyatt Concierge in order to find these incredible deals. And I think, I think more often people will be who have Hyatt points or looking to spend them will come away satisfied because they'll, they'll search for a room at a particular hotel that they want. They might not have any rooms available, but they might have suites and they might say, oh, well, that's a reasonable price. I'm going to book that. And so I, I think they'll be pretty satisfied. The losers in this, I think, I think, well, I mean, anyone who's been relying on that trick of contacting Hyatt Concierge is a bit of a loser, but I think there's more than that. I, I think, think there that, are too. I think there are some, some more losers. Go ahead. Okay. Who, I'm going to be interested in hearing what, what, what you think. But, well, you know, well, I, I, I'm of two minds. I'm not particularly happy about this, actually, even though it seems exciting on the surface. But who, who do you have as the yeah. losers? Well, one thing I'm really worried about is, um, is, the free upgrades that that globalists get upon uh, check in. So so, you know, you go to check in. Uh, you haven't applied any kind of suite upgrade. Uh, it, it was not uncommon to get upgraded to a suite. In fact, my stay at the Ventana was booked at a, as into a standard room as a guest of honor, where Stephen was the globalist. So I got his globalist benefits. I get upgraded to a, what they consider a premium suite, not even just a standard suite. So um, I think that's going to become less common because the suites and premium suites will be more, more often booked up. And yeah, I mean, not so, to mention that the property may figure, hey, listen, if you want the premium suite, pay up for it then because you can book it easily on points now. So if you didn't choose to, it's not that important to you. Right, right. And then, then also it might be also more or harder to apply our suite upgrade certificates. So those of us who got them at, at 50 nights or at 60 nights, you know, um, be, just because places will be booked up. I'm not as worried about that because I, I think that because they could be applied at the time of booking, you know, you could plan way, way in advance and, and you have a better chance of using that. So, so, um, so my thing, I guess overall, it boils down to, I think the biggest losers are those who, are, who have been counting on using the um, Hyatt Concierge track and those who uh, are hoping for a good upgrade at check-in. But who am I missing? Well, no, I, I think that you have the two biggest groups for sure. I think it dilutes Hyatt globalist status. I think, you know, that's, that's unfortunate. Uh, dilutes Hyatt globalist status for the reasons that you gave and also for the reasons that it's going to do the same for the guest of honor bookings. So uh, for a globalist who wants to share that kind of 
of stuff with anyone, the chance to get that nice upgrade and that sort of thing, I think those may be harder to come by for your guest of honor as well. And, uh, and so that's unfortunate because the guest of honor it, uh, program or whatever you want to call it is one of the great benefits of Hyatt Globalist for sure. And, and so I think that it, it takes Hyatt Globalist down a notch. Obviously for me as someone who's not a globalist, it's disappointing because I enjoy using those guest of honor <laughs> bookings. But I think yeah. for an average customer who just wants to be able to treat a family member or a friend to a really nice night, it also takes away a little bit from it because it does make those upgrades a little harder to come by. Now, like you said, I think the average member comes out a winner here in the ability to use their points easily for a nice room. So I think overall, this is likely to be a very popular thing from Hyatt, uh, but I think it is going to be fairly unpopular with globalists. Now, the other thing that I really dislike about this, and it's probably unfair to Hyatt, but I have been doing everything I can all day to not go to Hyatt.com because I don't even want to be just marginally tempted to transfer points <laughs> over right now because I, uh -huh. we've said again and again it, it, yeah. it does not make sense right now to transfer right. points to a loyalty program so i do not want to transfer my chase ultimate rewards points to hyatt right now but man all i want to do is start looking for a great hotel to book next year <laughs> <laughs> so i'm doing everything i can to stay away from that stupid site today yeah <laughs> i'm particularly happy well, about that, well, that is yeah. not, it's not hyatt's fault Nice. And, and um, you know, uh, there's that Hyatt 25% rebate on awards that we talked about uh, last week, which make it a little tougher. If, if you if you want to stay in a suite before October 8th, that's pretty compelling. There's also brand new um, a buy one get one on Miraval properties with with points. So uh, you could stack those two things plus actually book into a suite, I believe. Um, so all that stuff might be pretty attractive. <laughs> yes, it might be. But, you know, the other thing that I, I have to say, I'm a little glad that this came out now in some ways and a little disappointed in others, I suppose, but <laughs> a little glad because it came out at a time when we've been talking a lot about the value of points and the opportunity cost of points and that sort of thing. And right now, if you don't have Hyatt points, if you have Chase Ultimate Rewards points that you're thinking about transferring over to Hyatt, and you know as well as anybody that right now, if you get the Sapphire Reserve, those are worth one and a half cents each. So that 60,000 point premium suite at the Park Hyatt New York, which is really nice. I got upgraded to that one bedroom City View suite a couple of years ago, one of the nicest rooms I've ever stayed in. But it's like $900 worth of points per night right now. Right, now, it's right. a great deal compared to the cash rate. But that's 900 real dollars. It's not <laughs> exactly. like 900 funny money dollars anymore. So right. it's almost a little disappointing that it came out now. Again, not Hyatt's fault, really, but because it's at a time when I'm thinking more about the actual value. I mean, sure, those points were worth $600 before. It was a little bit easier to ignore that, saying, oh, I would never cash out points at one cent each. Now it's a lot harder to ignore it, I yeah. think. It, well, as we talked about recently, uh, Chase kind of is is ruining our joy of free they are right? they by are. making it <laughs> but we love that they did this allowed us to cash out points at one and a half cents just by charging against grocery purchases but it makes it harder to spend the points because it feels like you're spending real money and that's <laughs> that's and, both yeah, good and bad well right 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 i mean it's good in the sense that i guess it, <laughs> it's helping us make better more responsible decisions but on the on the flip side it does totally take away some of the fun because exactly you know, I, I look at those nights of ventana at 48k each and i'm like i mean that's amazing the place looks great but also yeah. at the same time it's like 600 bucks would i would i spend 600 dollars if, if i didn't have the points would i spend the 600 a night or whatever six and change that is i guess now right I, almost 700 750 a night. Um, you know, would I spend that in cash to stay there? I wouldn't. I know some people would. People do all the time, but I wouldn't. So, I, right. you know, it's kind of like a double-edged sword right now. I'm looking at it right. and it, it right. seems very exciting, but at the same time, never has there been a time when I've been more aware of the value of those points <laughs> thanks to the, <laughs> the grocery store cash out. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's a little less exciting than it would have been a year ago. Right, right. Um, so, but that actually reminds me, two things about that are sort of saving graces for those who are upset or who think that this is a devaluation of globalist status. So I'm getting back to that okay, conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one is that Hyatt does not have a points advance feature like Marriott does. So Marriott, right. you could book an award even if you don't have enough points for it. Hyatt, you can't. So how many people, so if you think about like these 
luxury resorts you want to stay in the premium suite for 60,000 points per night, how many people have 180,000 points sitting around to book just a three night stay? Um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that will, that, that prevents it from being like, at least at that high end from, from everything getting gobbled up right away. Now at the low end, obviously like, like the, uh, Hyatt Regency Albuquerque that I highlighted in the post. Um, it's 5K for a standard day. room or 10K for the presidential, <laughs> the presidential suite. suite right. That's gone, right? right I mean, right. sorry I blew that for everybody. Like, <laughs> probably would have booked it myself had, it, had I like had any thought I'd be in Albuquerque in the next year, but I don't think I will be. Um, but uh, yeah, so anyway, so so that's one saving grace. Um, the the other oh no I'm forgetting my train of thought. I know there <laughs> for globalists, so, so for globalists, there's the fact that there's going to be obviously fewer people with a number oh, of I, points. I just remember. Right. That's I just I remember. Okay. This exactly. this is a really important. This is like a brilliant thought. So okay. To, I'm looking forward to a brilliant. Pre, all right. Pre advertising my brilliant. You need like thought. a little drum. I'm gonna I'm gonna put <laughs> slide a little drum roll into the. Recording. Okay. Cool. All right. Okay. So so a lot of Hyatt's have premium suites that are not available to book with points. I mean, a lot of them do. And I know this because when we, so a year ago or so, um, we, you, me, and, and Steven mm -hmm. set out to try to find the cheapest Hyatt's that had the most luxurious premium suites. And that's where, like, I found that Albuquerque one that had right. that presidential suite, right? Well, what we found in that exercise is that a lot of Hyatt's, if you go to their suites page, you'll see all kinds of premium suites. But then if you inquire about them, they're not available to book by points. Like the, the Albuquerque Hyatt Regency is, is an exception. Like there's very few that allow the presidential suite to be booked with points. It's very, very unusual. Right. So anyway, so where I'm going with that. I, is I see that, where you're going. Is uh -huh. that, yeah, if the standard suites are all booked up and the first level premium suites are all booked up, you you check in as a globalist they might be nice enough to stick you in that presidential suite <laughs> or or the equivalent i mean a lot of hotels have quite a few premium suites that are not available with points so, so maybe you're going to increase more... your chances as, of getting a presidential suite as a of, globalist exactly that's, what's left. that's what i'm thinking i mean I, that's I, it's an interesting an interesting thought i it, i think it's maybe not even just possible but likely at properties in asia i feel like recognition of benefits tends to be really strong at properties in Asia and often upgrades are more generous. So I think that that is actually possible. I think of the, the Park Hyatt uh, Kyoto we looked at and uh, there was a, another property in Osaka or somewhere. Like, there were a couple that were in Japan that I remember a number of their premium suites weren't available on points. And I think those would be good examples where perhaps you would have a decent shot. Yeah. So. Well, I just remember being disappointed over and over. I would, I would, I would uh, message Hyatt Concierge on Twitter, like, "How about this one? What you know, which premium suites are available?" And I'd get back, like, you know, "Oh, this junky one." Right. And not necessarily junky. I'm sure they're very nice, but you know, not the ones I was hoping for. Basically, that were the Twitter concierge on the got website. sick of that. By the way, so they're like, you know, <laughs> sure what? we're just going to make these bookable online because we don't have another <laughs> message from Greg. We heard he's going to update that post from last year. We got to get this functionality out, guys. Let's go. There you go. <laughs> so, so I, I mean, I think it's interesting me or, or blame me. <laughs> yeah, I, I did, and I didn't check some of the more popular properties that, that perhaps I should have. Maybe the and as Maui and uh, some of the. How about the small luxury hotels? Were any of those available? With I, I don't think you were able. You weren't able to book those uh, with points anyway. Anyway, yeah. So, so it's, yeah, so likely, likely still can't. I think an exciting development overall for people with chase points and with high points and certainly uh, you know, those who are looking to, to create a special stay. And the, and the key tip here, if you didn't catch it, that I think Greg made when he talked about finding extreme luxury in the Hyatt premium suites is that one of the ways this can come in handy is if you're traveling with a family and you need a larger room so that you can get extra people in that room, this can really be handy and save you some points and some money sometimes, the ability to book some of these suites that are larger that can easily fit three or four or five or six or you know, 25 people, maybe not 25, but, uh, <laughs> but more people anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so uh, cool right. stuff. Did you look at any that, you, that you're like particularly interested in? Did you get tempted by something? I know, you know, Ventana is obviously a popular one for you. Is there anything else that 
stood now, out to you? The, the yeah. only thing I looked at for myself so far was uh, to see whether I could actually make the stay I already have booked at Ventana a little bit longer. <laughs> and uh, it wasn't available wasn't at available, that time, yeah. which doesn't surprise me. Now, Ventana, to get anything to show up at all, you have to be looking for two nights in a row. So you need to be strategic about how you do those searches and and um, expect to see similar things, but maybe even longer periods of time for Hawaii. Like a right. number of Hawaii places like the Honda's Maui plays games like that where you have to have a certain number of days before they'll show you anything. Although I will say that in the past, anyway, I've booked those certain number of days and then plans changed and I had to call in and see if they were willing to change my checkout date a couple of times. And, and that, that has worked for me. I don't know whether it'll work for you or someone right. else in the future, but certainly there's some techniques that you might. Exactly. If you got Hyatt that, that's a great little workaround to, to those issues. Now Hyatt used to require a three night stay in order to book a suite award, I believe. Yeah, uh, you're so, right. I think and, they, uh, they did. But yeah. they, they dropped that they at dropped some point that. along the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now so, it's a property by property thing. So good news. So if you're looking at book some Hyatt stays, you're looking at book some future travel, that sounds great. Me, I'm just not ready to do much of that yet. And you know, I, I posted this week also about great availability to Australia and premium cabins in April of 2021. And a number of people commented to say, you know, there's just very little chance that Australia is going to let tourists in as early as April 2021. Qantas isn't expecting flights to start until I guess at least July of 2021. And so they said, there's just, just not worth booking anything then yet. And I was thinking, you know, if it's not worth booking a, a trip like that nine months out, it just makes it hard for me to book any of these premium suites. <laughs> yeah. Which true. is so disappointing. Like <laughs> the timing on this is uh, ah killer, but, but all right. So hi, thank you. I guess uh, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully that availability is still there in like a year when I'm ready to actually book some travel. <laughs> I, you know, even if it hurts some of us, I still think it was the right thing for them to do to make their, their program easier to accept, access the great benefits that the program has. I, and I think that most people are, can't yeah. fault them for that. No, most people are going to find that to be a really good benefit, especially the people who just didn't know you could do it before at all. And, and goodness knows the majority of members probably didn't even know you could book suites with their points before. So, so nice win for them. Congratulations. All right. Very awesome. good. Now, do you remember the, the name of our next segment about Mattress Run? Of course I do, because it was a great hybrid between the reader from YouTube and our creative director to come up with Mattress Running the Numbers. So Very good. Very good. <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to insert the cashier, like the, the register sort of a sound here. So, all to, right. We need to get better at those like verbal sound effects yeah, so that we could we just... Do. Well, or just along cut, the way. cut the audio out. We'll and save the... you a lot of editing. I mean, save our, <laughs> uh, tech, our audio tech team a lot of editing. Um, <laughs> so Matt, just running yeah. the numbers, you, you wrote about this week about how you are, well, your wife is going to be seven nights or is now seven nights short of Marriott Platinum status because thankfully Marriott gave everybody half, say everybody, and I'm kind of looking around like, well, not everybody got it correctly. But the idea <laughs> was that everybody should have gotten half of the number of elite nights necessary for the same elite tier that they earned in 2019 based on whatever their stay activity was. So if you earned gold last year, then you got 13 nights added to your total. If you earned platinum last year, you get 25 nights added to your total elite nights for this year, et cetera. So if you're somebody who has both a business and a personal Marriott credit card. It doesn't matter whether it's Chase or Amex. You have one business and one personal. You get 15 nights of elite credit from each of those. Can't have two personal, can't have two business. One of each gives you 30 nights. And then if you were gold last year, you got 13 more nights. As Which Mrs. you would Myler have been gold did. because the 30 nights would have gotten you there. Exactly. So, so, yep. so that's 43 nights. Yep. With, with having no stays at all this year. Zero. A number of people have 43 nights in their account. My wife was one of them. Took a picture of her phone showing that as, as the featured image on the post. My wife should be another one of them, but she only got five nights of elite oh, credit for some she got, inexplicable she got reason. She did. But okay, so yeah. yeah, you took a screenshot or a shot of her phone for the post, seven right. nights short. And I, I actually put a sort of Easter egg in that, in that picture. The, mm -hmm. the featured image of that post had a hand holding the phone and, and the, and the uh, app, the Marriott app, showing the 43 nights. And, well, you know what number uh, 43 is close to, right? <laughs> I do. I do know what number it is. It's one off of a really important number. Right, right. So 
it's one off from 42, which is the answer to life, the universe and, and everything as I've explained to you before on this you show. Have, right? You have explained it to me. And I was familiar <laughs> with the concept, despite the fact that I haven't read the book, but uh, right. But so but I was, I, I, so yes, anyway, I was surprised that I think that nobody looked really closely at the image because I haven't gotten any, anyone, you know, mentioning it to me. Um, so I had to, I had to get rid of, uh, my wife's loyalty number, which we're showing on it. So I put in 42, 42, 42, 42. But I also wanted to change, I changed her name it, before it had her first name and your, your gold or whatever it was. Um, and so I put in Zaphod, which is the main character in, in um, the Hitchhiker's, <laughs> Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So little Easter egg in there for any uh, <laughs> uh, nerds or, or, or ex-nerds out there that, that love that series. <laughs> <laughs> I, that's kind of funny that nobody caught that. I would think that somebody yeah. would have in this community. Well, I, you know, I was mainly disappointed that Marriott didn't give us 42 nights instead of 43 because that would have made it much better. I'm disappointed that my wife only got five, all right? Well, so yeah, I don't that, even want to hear you crying about it. She got her five that's, and that's and pretty 30, disappointing. So right. Thirty five nights. Yeah. That, so, that is. Yeah. So I I personally on my account, I I had titanium last year and, and I had enough stays to get me to with, with this promotion, got me to eighty two nights, which is seven nights above to titanium, which those seven nights are useless to me, right? Because I'm not <laughs> right. going for concierge the next yeah. one right and so they do me no good so what i really want to do is take those seven nights and give them to my wife who is 43 and then she'd be platinum but i can't figure out how to do that because <laughs> <laughs> i don't think there's a way to do it so no, no there's not so in that case that leaves mrs myler seven nights short of 50 and of course Anyone who's familiar with the Marriott program knows why we're talking about being seven nights short because at platinum, you get platinum status at 50 nights and platinum status at 50 nights is really the status to aim for with Marriott and titanium, I guess is, is higher, but there's not really a lot of difference on paper between the two. So platinum though is a pretty significant upgrade over the gold status that you'd have at only 43 nights. You get to platinum and you get free breakfast at like, I don't know, a lot of properties. <laughs> right. If That's you... the best we could say in a, in a brief conversation, right? A lot of property. You have to go to, you have to <laughs> consult the matrix on frequent miler to determine whether or not you're staying at one of those properties. But a lot of places you'll get breakfast. A lot of places you'll get lounge access. Again, notice a lot, not all, but most places with a lounge, you'll get lounge access. Right. So, I mean, so that's nice. And 4 p.m. checkout, some extra points, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And of course, you get the choice benefit, which you can pick the choice benefit. The only choice there really is at 50 is five nights of sweet upgrades or, or sweet night awards, as they call them. Marriott. Right, right. Unless you're ready to buy a, a Weston Heavenly bed and right. get a discount. But as I showed before, you could get discounts other ways that are probably just as good on those same on the same bedding. So it really doesn't. It's not <laughs> right. Sweet night awards are the only thing you're getting. Awards. Now, at 75 nights, you have an option of getting a 40K free night certificate, which has obvious value. Um, yeah. So, so she's seven nights short. What do you think? I mean, does it, does it make sense to bridge the gap? I mean, you wrote a, a whole post about right. whether or not it does. But, you know, I thought it was interesting. I didn't feel like you really concluded one way or another whether or not it's worth it for Mrs. Myler. Yeah. Well, oh, I thought I did. Okay. Well, anyway, I mean, Maybe the way I wrote the post was intended to be, here's what you need to know and what you need to figure out about your situation to try to decide how much is it worth to you to go for those extra seven nights if you're in that same situation. And I, I generated some numbers based on a made up scenario, which was not my wife's scenario. Um, and, and, you know, sort of estimated how much platinum status would be worth to you in that scenario. And then said, okay, if you can sort of buy platinum status, buy those seven nights for that much money or less, then you come out ahead. Otherwise, maybe you shouldn't do it. My wife's case is different, though, because we usually book all of our stays with my account. And so there's not a lot of value to her having uh, platinum status, except for when using the free nights that come with her credit cards. So, right. so to, to get platinum benefits for two nights a year, 
you know, I, I just can't see that being worth very much. So, so we are not going to go out of our way to get her to platinum, although it's kind of excruciating because we actually have those two nights booked for later this year. And assuming we do it, and she's only five nights away, and it's so <laughs> close. But I, I just can't see it. I, you know, I, I can't imagine the situation where we would look at spending, even if we could find a category one off peak and all that stuff. That's what twenty thousand points for off peak five nights. Uh, I, I can't see spending twenty thousand points to get to get free breakfast most, and most two, and two, two, two free breakfasts. You, but, you wouldn't spend ten thousand points on breakfast. Um, <laughs> well, <I wouldn't>. so, <laughs> no, but, but it, it's even worse than that because, um, like, so in some cases, uh, we're using them at a hotel where, where we book multiple rooms. So we have one room booked under my account where we are getting free breakfast, the other room booked for our son. So we're not even talking about two free breakfasts. We're talking about one. one. And this particular hotel in the past has extended the free to everyone in our party anyway. <laughs> so, so it might literally be worth nothing uh, right. depending on how we would use her free nights. So, yeah. So, it, so it's, it's pretty easy from her point of view. So so the numbers that you came to, I mean you gave some example numbers saying yeah. depending on how many nights you'd stay and how much you value breakfast and how much you value the sweet night awards. And so the number that you came up with which you admitted was very subjective and and everyone would have to run the numbers for their themselves. But it seemed right. like you thought a reasonable price point would be like $450, right? For the seven to nights. get platinum status for get someone platinum who's status. going to travel a fair amount and would value getting suite upgrades because they have some trips planned where that would be important to them. Yep. Yeah. So I looked at that and I said, okay, first of all, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. If you are willing to spend $450 for Marriott platinum status, stop it. What are you doing? Get the Hilton Aspire card. For $450, you can buy yourself top tier Hilton status. And it comes with a free night certificate that's valid for two years, a welcome bonus on the credit card if you don't have it, $250 resort credit each card member year, a $250 airline incidental credit each year. For $450, you could do just as well, basically, with Hilton. And you don't need to consult the matrix to figure out whether or not you're going to get breakfast because you're going to get it everywhere. <laughs> So you're going to get breakfast, you're going to get lounge access, so there's a lounge, you're not going to run into the situation where you're like, oh, well, this is the Ritz, and so you don't get lounge access at the Ritz, or, you know, the, the lounge isn't a lounge, it's the Chambers Club here at the St. Pancras. <laughs> uh, so, these these are know, all true stories. So, so if, you're, if you're even contemplating spending 450 bucks, I would say you should definitely be getting the, the Hilton Aspire card instead, get your status, get your benefits, and get a whole bunch of a whole bunch more. I mean, there's a lot more value, I think, in that. So I wouldn't even remotely consider spending four hundred and fifty dollars for those seven nights. Now, when you talk about sending the points and the different numbers of points, there may be a price point in terms of number of points if you can book a lower category hotel. Category one Marriotts are a little difficult to come by. Some parts of the U.S. you're not going to find one anywhere nearby. If you do, okay, maybe. But now let's go towards your valuations for a second. I, like I said, I think if you're going to spend 450, Marriott ought to be out of here, out of your picture here. But I want to go into into the nut and bolts of this a little bit cuz right. you valued before before I do. I'm, I'm go ahead. okay, you're going to rebuttal. Okay, good. Let me just, have, let me just mention coffee. one thing. I, I don't uh -huh. sort of disagree with you at a high level, but I just want to point out one little caveat, which is that okay. even though the Hilton Aspire card gives you Hilton Diamond status, which is great, and a lot of other perks which are great. Hilton Diamond status doesn't do you a lot of good when you are staying at a Marriott. And no, so true. The, you stay the, at Marriott's the, a lot. The the assumption in in all those things was that you were you knew you'd be staying at least, I forget what I said, two weeks or something like that at Marriott Hotels next year. True. And so yeah, I mean you're right. Switch if, to Hilton if, next year. Though. If you could switch to Hilton and they're just as good, <laughs> great. But uh, you have a stay at the St. Pancras planned. And okay. you're looking forward Fair. to it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of value in platinum status there. Fair. I'll give you. I'll give you that. All right. That that's a that's a, a fair point. Although, if you have a, a state planned at the St. Pancras, where you're not going to get lounge access as a platinum member, unless you get lucky and get upgraded to the Chambers Wing, right? 
you, do you get well, breakfast as a platinum member there? You do. Yeah, yeah, you, you, do. Get, okay. you get free breakfast. Um, so you can use your five sweet night awards to upgrade to the Chambers Club. It's not guaranteed, but um, uh, I'm or betting. You, or you can book betting. the Conrad London with your free night certificates <laughs> from your Aspire card. And it's guaranteed you're going to get breakfast. So Which I guarantee is not as nice as the <laughs> as St. Pancras. That, that may be the, the case. I don't. I, I actually didn't eat breakfast when I stayed there, so, <laughs> so I don't. I don't know. Anyway, but, it, it's it's fine. It, it, anyway, the, let's go on. <laughs> okay. So now I'm glad you brought up the Sweet Night Awards because the Sweet Night Awards you had valued at around two hundred dollars, which again you said was subjective. To, you know, it's going to vary from person to person. But I looked at that number and I was like. All right. So what you said, I think, more or less, correct me if I'm wrong, is that, you know, you're figuring out a $200 value thinking that if you have a special stay coming up where having a suite would be valuable to you, it might be worth spending $200 for the chance at getting a suite, which I thought was perfectly worded because that's exactly what you'd be paying for is the chance at maybe getting upgraded to a suite, it's not real. finding out until five days before your stay when it's probably beyond the cancellation deadline. Cause you know, Marriott loves their 14 day and 45 day cancellation policies at some of those really nice properties, right? So it's going to already be beyond the cancellation deadline where you're locked in by the time you find out whether or not you're even going to get a suite. And then if you wait until the end of the year, if your special stay isn't until you know, the end of the membership year, and you're going to just not have another chance to use those potentially. So there's a good chance for breakage there where you might not even get to use all five of them. Now, sure, maybe you will, but come on, let's be realistic. Everybody's status just got extended through the end of next year, right? Then they made it super easy for everybody to get status again. How easy do you really think it's going to be to use these Sweet Night Awards? I'm putting like very little faith on these Sweet Night Awards working out. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm happy to get them. I'll take them. But I already had five of them and I just got five more thanks to the 38 free nights that Marriott gave me for having titanium last year. So I've got 10 of them now. And if I actually happen to get to 75, I'm going to end up with, I could end up with 15. I'll take the free night certificate at 75 nights, but everybody and their brother is going to have a ton of sweet night awards. Now, do you really think they're going to be, they're going to clear very often? I mean, you got to have a lot of faith to be willing to pay $200 for them. You wouldn't really pay 200 bucks, would you? Well, so, mm. I mean, if you knew it was going to clear, of course you would. I mean, $40 yeah, right, and that, of course right, you would. Right. But, so, so, well, what my, chance so, is my, there? so my experience with it not clearing on a five night awards day was that they kept checking for me each day. I mean, I had to talk to the front desk about it, but they were good. They kept checking for me each day. And, and I think we spent two nights in a standard room, then the rest in the suite. And so it's not like it. Yeah, I mean, if, if it didn't clear it, if I never got the upgrade at all and never had a chance to use it again the whole year and then expired, that would that would be a huge bummer. Um, yeah, no, how, honestly, how many other you, make, properties you make a really have, good point. It, I mean, if, I, yeah, you know, if, I, if yeah. We, we talked about, we've, I've used this analogy before, if someone came to my door and said, hey. <laughs> you might get upgraded I, I got a deal year. for you. <laughs> you, know that, you know that stay you have booked? I'm gonna I'm gonna sell you the chance of getting a sweet upgrade, right? And it's only gonna cost you two hundred dollars. You're right. I would not. Right. I would not. Pay right. That. I mean, it's like playing blackjack. You know, I know I know you're not much of a gambler, so I mean, I I wouldn't spend two hundred dollars at to maybe get upgraded. I mean, imagine if people would do that, hotels would sell that all the time. They'd be like, hey, just you know, pay fifty dollars and maybe a check in, you'll get upgraded. <laughs> maybe not. Oh, yeah. sorry. They should, no. <laughs> they'll probably start doing that now that they heard this. Right, right, right. So no, I mean that seemed like a a a, a, a highly overvalued valuation in my opinion. So we know that Hilton listens to these uh, right. podcasts, so uh, you better watch out. That's Unfortunately. Your next, your next Hilton stay. <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> well, you know, I've seen that from, uh, is it Radisson that does that? I think it's Radisson where it'll give you, it'll say like you could pay $25 or, or bid basically on an upgrade, you know, $25 and you don't get charged unless you get upgraded at check-in kind of a thing. Right. You know, right. it's kind of like the cheap way of doing that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I, I, I look at it and I say, I, I don't know. I, I feel like I've heard a lot of stories. Now, I've, my elite status experience with Marriott is relatively limited. I had some great stays last year as a platinum member. Uh, so, I, you know, I definitely don't mean to take away from the Marriott program, but 
I've heard enough stories from people who have had elite status with Marriott for more years that they've had trouble using those at particular properties they're looking to go to. And obviously you're gonna have people on the other end that have great luck using their suite night upgrades. I feel like it's one of those things where the expected value isn't $200. To me. All right, so, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that one. Uh, okay. So now think back to your St. Regis uh, Bora Bora stay. Yes, okay. How much value do you think you got from having platinum status for that stay? I mean, a lot. A lot because of free breakfast every day and, and, and food is expensive in Bora Bora and you're stuck when you're at one of those properties. There's not someplace else to go for breakfast. So, I mean, a lot of value because I spent five days, I mean, five nights there. So five breakfasts, I, mean, I, I think breakfast was probably like 50 bucks a piece. So I mean, $100 a day in breakfast. Plus you know, if I hadn't, well, my son still would have been free. I think kids are still free there. So I think he still would have been free, but still hundred bucks a day plus a tip, maybe blah, blah, blah. I mean, it was huge there. So it definitely can be, you're right. If you specifically have a stay lined up at one of those top tier Marriott properties, you've already got the points earmarked for that and the plan made, then okay. All right. But even there, I mean, $500 for 450, eh, you know. <laughs> a but not, not a bad, it's not a bad. So, but, but then on the flip side, you said that you looked at, at a couple of different examples with category one and category two, and how many points it might cost you. And I think right. that, you know, you'd said, obviously if you get category one, it might be a better deal for you. But a category two, I think it came out to like 75,000 points is what it would be if it was. If, if you had to book at standard. If yeah. you had to book at standard. Yeah. Right. Is that what it was? Mm -hmm. or, or whatever. It's so it came out to 75. And I remember reading in your post that you said 75 K is more than the 450, but it's not an unreasonable price to pay for platinum. And I'm just gonna add this as a punctuation point. What? That's not an unreasonable <laughs> price to pay for 75K? I mean, you're talking almost enough for a night at the St. Regis Bora Bora for platinum set. No, I wouldn't spend that much for platinum set. I feel like that's, you used to buy it for 32,000 points a year. 40,000. 40,000, I thought it was 32. No. <laughs> 40,000 40, <laughs> points a year. 75. Was, Get but, out of here. But wait a minute. No, yeah. All right. Um. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But you know what? I say all I that. Know. I say all that in fun because my wife, I expected to be in the same situation with 43 nights. And I was already trying to figure out how I could get her to 50. So, <laughs> so before you're at the post. So I definitely, uh, definitely was tempted by the same thing, thinking the same thing with Greg in terms of uh, you know, being able to get those benefits on the free night awards in her name. But like you said, I'm not overly concerned about that. I'm not, I'm not willing to pay 450 bucks for it. So maybe if the opportunity presented itself, you know, where we needed a one night stay here or there, at like a Spring Hill Suites or something where my titanium status isn't going to do us any good anyway, maybe I would book those in her name to get her a little bit closer, but, uh, but I, I wouldn't go out of my way. Right. Right. Yeah, it, it doesn't make sense in, in a two-player scenario. I mean, right. maybe. where one of you already know. has it. Yeah, it definitely does. Right, right, right. If neither okay. of you has it, maybe a little more. But all right, so <laughs> all right, so that, that was right, so uh, so mostly numbers. mostly you've mostly convinced kind of me that my numbers are probably on the high side, um, unless someone has, you know, a couple stays like like the St. Regis Bora Bora type of thing planned, you're going to get a lot more value. Then. Yeah, I mean, if you got a million Marriott points or whatever, and you know, you're going to be using a lot of Marriott points, then okay, all right. Then I'll give it to you. Maybe, maybe it's worth it. Then. Uh, or uh, if you're, if, if you're going to be staying a lot of Marriott's, let's say for work, um, actually just getting, I didn't really talk about this in the post, but just getting the bonus points that you get as platinum um, would be be a, a big rebate over over uh, gold so it would if be you're earning a lot you know it would be but but if you get to choose your 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 hotel for work then i would say you can earn a boatload of points in hilton too and hilton is probably everywhere that marriott is so it really comes down to whether or not you know, if you yeah. want to say the same regis bora bora well, versus the conrad bora bora you know or whatever else. right a lot, a lot i think there's a lot of businesses that um use marriott corporate as their preferred code. yeah corporate hotel yeah um more than hilton Fair. anyway so. That's fair. All right, so we, we agree that for some people, All I don't right. know who they are, but for some people, it makes sense. All right, so yeah, so um, so the summary of that is is uh, Greg's, run the numbers. Greg's feeling like he got kind of run over in that whole conversation. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. But that's that, part that of the that's, summarizers. That's what, are. that's what everybody tunes in for. Right? It's good TV. <laughs> not just running the points. The not, not just running, running the numbers. The numbers. The numbers. Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah. <laughs> 
All right, so that brings us then to the next key segment, right? Which I know you're looking forward to because this is post-roast. Right, which you already did. You already (laughs) roasted. I did. I did. I'm not not going to rake you through the coals again. You have nothing else to do, right? No, I mean, you wrote like a a World of Hyatt complete guide this week. How am I going to roast that? I mean, (laughs) what am I going to say? You left out the Guests of Honor part, Greg. It's incomplete, you idiot. Right, right, right. (laughs) I I know that. I know it's incomplete. (laughs) There's not everything in there. Um, Yeah. Okay, so So, uh, let's pretend that was your your roast. That was my roast. Your your complete guide was incomplete. Right. Done. So... One of your posts this week was retirement planning. It was. So you, you wrote about how you made a lot of mistakes early on. You, you trusted someone you shouldn't have trusted and invested in retirement plans that cost you a lot, basically. Right. Because there were fees for buying in and fees, ongoing maintenance fees that all added up to mean that you're basically poor and homeless. <laughs> close to it close to it <laughs> or or will be in retirement perhaps <laughs> right oh right certainly right, compared right. to the me that would have had a lot more money had i not done that for the last 10 years yeah, yeah. Gotcha. okay all right so i probably I, could have I bought mis- another house for what i lost <laughs> so i misread that a little bit then. um <laughs> so you know I'm supposed to be roasting. I don't really have a lot to complain about with that post. I mean, basically, you roasted yourself. You, I did. I did. You, you said in that post, "Boy, was I an idiot!" And let's run the numbers, and I'll show you what an idiot I was. And right. I, I, sh- I showed I, off how just how stupid it was. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I, I agree. Like... But you also <laughs> <laughs> you also unveiled something I didn't know that's not related to your retirement savings, oh. which is that. Your wife had to convince you to apply for this job three and a half years ago. I did not know you that you almost Easter made egg. the mistake of your life right. by not applying for this job. It was close. Yeah, I, I, I almost, I did almost, I admit, that would have been like, comp, talk about compounding interest, compounding mistakes right there, right? I mean, <laughs> could have gotten a lot worse. So you're right. No, she has definitely had a, a few of the nuggets of wisdom in my life over the years. And one of them was that you have to apply for this job. Because of course, I had seen it unfrequently. We were both readers back at the time. So this was, you know, Greg put out a post looking for help in January of 2017, I think it was. So I put out a post saying that he was looking for help and I saw it and I was immediately interested, but also at the same time thought, ah, you know, I I probably wouldn't get that. I I don't know, blah, blah, blah. You know, all the basic kind of stuff that everybody doubts themselves to some extent. And, and of course my wife saw it and she said, Hey, frequent milers got a job posting. And I said, yeah, I know I saw it. And she's like, well, you're going to apply for it. Right. And I was like, well, you know, I don't know. And she's like, what do you mean you don't know? <laughs> and I said, well, I'm not sure. I don't know. And she, no, you have to apply for that job. <laughs> and so sure enough, she pushed me to do it. Yeah. And at the time, you know, I was, I was doing something else and I, I wasn't actively looking for something different. I, you know, life was you got kind of in a routine. Life was fine. It was okay. There was nothing I was, I was looking for to be new. And my goodness, what a mistake it would have been if I hadn't, or I probably wouldn't have known what I was missing out on much the same way that I didn't realize how much money I was losing in my retirement because <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right. I just didn't look at it for a long time. So no, it was a great decision because uh, because it's been a lot of fun roasting Greg. So <laughs> somebody else would be here <laughs> roasting Greg, if not. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I don't Could know have been Tom Brady. Out. I mean, I so, remember. So, um, so my wife has has long had a um, rule, basically, which is that in our relationship, a rule mm-hmm. in our relationship, which is that she's always right. And <laughs> it sounds like the same applies in your relationship. And so, I just want to thank your wife for being right uh, back then and making you apply. That's that was just great. Shaking my head and not commenting. <laughs> <laughs> there's you know it's funny it's funny you said that because uh so our families have these kind of strange every family's got their strange things that are you know like these sayings that come from the family and so big saying from my family is that Aureus is always right so oh. that's that's been a long stand and that my grandmother was always our, our very uh, yeah slogan yeah, I, th- I think I cut that out. Maybe I cut that out. I don't know. Maybe I had it in one of the I videos b- briefly. Mm-hmm. Anyway, my grandmother was always very, very firm on that, that of course you're right. You're Arias. Arias is always right. And so that became a thing. It was a big speech at my wedding and whatnot. Arias is always right. And so now, of course, 
now my wife is Reyes, and so you know she's always right now because now she's you know, now she's right right so. now. <laughs> <laughs> so right now she's right. So awesome. I will have to tell her that she was lucky to have been uh, you know endowed with that that uh, <laughs> that ability to always. It came right. with the name. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's and, not and genetic; it's just the name. No, well, you know, it, it is. It's part of the it, name. It, it does have a nice point. alliteration to it. Reyes, Reyes is always, always right. right. Yeah. It's true. And, and, you know, when there's a disagreement between Reyes, it's, I mean, it's still true. Reyes is always right. One of you is right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so that, that said, thank you for that. Yeah. So if you didn't check out that post this week, you can go check out uh, how I'm going to end up in the poorhouse someday. Or, or hopefully not. <laughs> no, not anymore. Because right, he's fixed it all and he's, he's on the right path. So... <laughs> <laughs> right actually great <laughs> <laughs> right and you're right. on your way to 2.62 percent everywhere so i am that's that's, that's a, in your future that's you, an you exciting approve, change you got approved for the bank of america premium rewards card and now you just need to get that um platinum preferred honor status and and then you'll have the the bonus on top of the one and a half percent to get you to uh 2.62 right and, and we did is that is that going to become your everywhere else card in your wallet yeah. I think so. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm look, kind of looking forward to being able to get rid of the Alliant card because it was a bummer when they, uh, they, they first of all, increased the annual fee and then put in the cap every month in terms of how much you can earn. You can only earn cash back on the first 10000 in purchases each month now, so you got to kind of pay attention to that. Like, I put taxes on it yesterday, and, and my wife was going somewhere today to you know shop for furniture with her, her mother and and of course, her mother is happy to have us put it on her credit card and pay us for it. So we earn the rewards. And I said, well, we put it on the Alliant card unless she spends more than this amount, because then we wouldn't earn anything. Right. So I said, you know, then you got to pick out a different card. And that's kind of right. annoying. That's, so, that is yeah. annoying. Yeah. yeah. So I look forward to, to that being the, the Bank of America. Card. What about Steve's yeah. advice now? Why, why not the blue uh, business plus to get two X everywhere? That, that's a good question. And it, that would be a good pick. What I had told her was if not the, the uh, Alliant card, then the Venture card, because I'm able to cash in those Venture points for Marriott gift cards at 1.4 yeah. cents each. However, I'm getting, of course, less excited about that now, because if I can get 2.62% cash back, then we're getting to the point where 2.8% ah, in Marriott gift cards, 262 in cash. Cash might be more valuable to me for a for uh, sure. long term. So, so that will, I'm definitely looking forward to having that card. So that's going to be a nice bonus. Also, by the way, if you're thinking about doing what I did, so for anybody who missed the post, the, the brief, brief version is that uh, we ended up moving Roth IRAs from uh, another brokerage over to Merrill Edge and Merrill Edge has, you know, mostly no fees. There's some fees, you know, do options trading, or whatever, a few things that have fees, but for the things that I want to do in my, my IRA and retirement and investment accounts, no fees on ETFs and stuff like that. So very, right. very simple, very easy. You don't need an advisor. And, it doesn't have to be guided. And also, it's, you're not like selling your stocks and rebuying them. Right. It's just changing control of the portfolio over to Merrill Edge. Yep. Yep. And, and so there was a bonus and there was an increased bonus that ended this week. I'm sure it'll come back again at some point. But so that also made it a good time to switch over because you know, we're going to get some money for switching it over. And then uh, additionally, now, I haven't actually gotten confirmation on this yet. I'm only officially moved over one of them so far. I haven't moved both of them yet. Um, but they, I had asked their chat reps whether or not they would cover the, the closure fee at the other brokerage because they were charging us $125 termination mm -hmm. fee to close oh, out there. And the chat rep from Bank of America said, we don't have an official program for that. But when you call up to make the transfer to transfer over custodians, ask. Because basically he said, we don't have an official you know, announcement that we do that. But if right. you ask, they're going to do it <laughs> kind nice. of a thing is what he had said. And so we did ask and they wrote down notes that they're going to call back, blah, blah, blah. It definitely didn't sound like it was a type of request that they don't get. So uh, whether or not they actually will, I don't know yet. So I can't confirm that. But it sounds like I think they'll probably pay that $125 termination fee on top of the bonus. And if they do, great. And it'll really have cost me nothing. Everything's going to move over as the, the investments they were. Now, of course, if you read the post, you know I'm going to get out of those investments because I don't want to be in them because of the fees, but I don't have to. I could have kept them the way right. they are. Right. So, um, the, and the fees that you're mentioning are, are because of the particular investments, right. not because of Merrill. It's, nothing to do with nothing Merrill. Do with exactly. Merrill. Just the, the mutual funds that I'm invested in have high ongoing 
uh, maintenance fees. That was part of the mistake that I, I got into these right. mutual right. funds that I should never have bought. So I'm very much looking forward to buying the right kind of, of ETFs from Merrill <laughs> Edge and not yeah. paying those ongoing. Yeah. And, and uh, for everyone who's listening, that's, that's like, oh, bummer, I, I missed out on that enhanced um, bonus structure that Nick wrote about. Um, what you need to know is every time it's come up with me where I've had uh, accounts that I wanted to move into Merrill, I've just talked with a rep, a Merrill rep, and said, I want to move this much money. What are there any bonuses that you can offer me? And generally, there are standard bon- they're the standard bonuses, but there's often more they can do. In fact, there was never a time where there wasn't something more they could do. So what, what that one time, well, the, the offer that just went away, that was like up to $900, I exactly, think, yep. uh, for mm-hmm. if you could do 200K, but it's, but certain amounts for less than 200K. Um, you know, I, I, I'm pretty sure you can get those amounts just about any time if you talk first to a rep and get it and get it a note on your account about that. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised by that at all. It definitely seems like uh, that that would be true. I, and I, I, I wasn't aware of that. I wasn't aware that that up to $900 offer existed. I found that on a forum somewhere and I did write a quick deal about it um, that same day before it expired. But, uh, but yeah, I would imagine if you call up, it does seem like they're pretty flexible in terms of offering whatever it is that they can to get your business over, which is nice. Cause my impression in the beginning, when you first wrote about this way back when, I know there were a couple of readers that said something about high fees at Merrill Lynch. And, and so I kind of ignored it initially, even though you said that the fees weren't high. I was like, oh, but it's not, you know, I've read a few other people said Merrill Lynch. Uh-huh. Is and they're right. Merrill Lynch does have higher administration fees and guided advising and all of that. But Merrill Edge is the discount brokerage that doesn't have those things. And right. so that was appealing to me. Now, obviously, if you want an advisor, you want somebody to hold your hand through it, blah, 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 then Merrill Edge won't be for you. But uh, but for me, it, it works out well because I'm going to save a lot of money. I'm going to hopefully make more money for my retirement. And I'm going to get this credit card that's going to give me 2.62% cash back. And it's a fast track to uh, platinum or to, to the, the preferred rewards program, which sounds like must be, from what you said, must be kind of the standard thing that you know when you first sign up, you put your money in all at once kind of at the beginning, then then they just go ahead and give you the Right. That, that's, that's been my experience uh, in both managing my account and, and my father's account back when, uh, is that uh, we got whatever level of status was based on the amount of money that was initially in that first month. Yeah. 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 There you go. So, so, all right. So good news there. Uh, good stuff. I'm, I'm glad that we were able to do that. I'm glad for reader Larry who had pointed out how much I was wasting <laughs> by not <For> sure. <laughs> doing that. <laughs> that was right. Really good. Right. All right. All right. So that brings Shoot, us to made it through, we made it through we post did. roast. Okay. We did. Yes. I only got lightly roasted. Uh, right. So, uh, so that brings us to the question of the week. And the question of the week is going to bring us back to Hyatt for a moment, but a little bit different than what we were talking about with Hyatt. So uh, I mean, I'm going to try to kind of parse this too, because it was kind of a long email that came in. Uh, they were asking about the world of Hyatt credit cards. So right now, the public offer on the world of Hyatt credit card gives you 10 elite nights towards status this year if you apply by the end of August. And then it's also basically 50,000 points. There's two spending tiers, but 50,000 points after you meet minimum spend in the first six months. But this person who wrote in said that doesn't seem appealing to him. So this is Koshin who wrote in. And so Koshin said that that's not appealing because he said, I don't see myself doing a mattress run or spending my way to global status this year. Then, so now we go on to the meat and potatoes of the question. Tonight, I was looking to book a Hyatt Awards Day and I got targeted for an offer for the World of Hyatt card I haven't seen before. A $200 statement credit after the first purchase and a free night award for a category one to seven, including the Ziva or Zalara brands, but not Mirabal. After spending just $3,000 in three months. So he said that offer is more enticing because not pursuing global status, don't need the 10 elite nights. And so he said it's like spending $2,800 to get 30,000 points plus a free night award that I can potentially use at a category seven hotel that goes for 30,000 a night. He thinks that's better because of the $200 statement credit and the, the free category one to seven night. Where did the 30,000 points come in? Yeah, you know, that's I, I just read it out of the email and that doesn't make sense. What I think Cushion was saying there, I remember from reading this before now, was that uh-huh. 
kind of getting the equivalent sort of 30,000 points because he's getting a free night cert that's available category one to category seven. Oh, okay. So he, I so, think he's mis, misvaluing that. Right, but, right. But, but, um, but, but the overall okay. question here is, is it better to spend $6,000 to earn 50,000 points on the Hyatt card or would it be a better offer to spend $3,000 and get a $200 statement credit and a category one to seven free night award? Which would you pick? Oh, I would definitely pick the former, the 50,000 points. So the, um, the, the only exception would be if, if it's hard to spend the full $6,000. And so the reason I'm saying that if you just compare the bonuses themselves, on the one hand, you have, um, you have a free night award good for up to, up to category seven, for, for up to category seven, which means it's, it's worth up to 30,000 points. But um, that really constrains you. Like the only way to get 30,000 points value is to use it at a hotel that costs 30,000 points. If you use it at some, there's some really awesome ones that cost 25,000. <laughs> You're out of luck. Um, and you can't, uh, to my knowledge, use it for a sweet award. Um, so, you know, uh, 50,000 points would get you... Um, five nights in the presidential suite at the Hyatt Regency <laughs> Albuquerque. Uh, <laughs> and uh, those points are really easy to keep alive. Whereas the free night uh, cert is um, only good for a year. So, uh, but even if we forget about how long it's uh, alive, I mean, and if we forget about, like if we assume you, you're definitely going to use it at a 30,000 point hotel where you would have spent those points otherwise, then you're talking about, um, in one case, getting uh, 50,000 points total. In the other case, getting 30,000 points plus, 20, well, plus, plus $200. $200. So you're basically getting $200 instead of 20,000 points. And we value you know, Hyatt points at about one and a half cents each for redemption. So that's more like $300, the, that difference. So I think the, uh, the standard bonus is worth a lot more. So, okay. I, I agree. Uh, that was, that was my initial reaction, but now let, let's, let's jump back and run the numbers there for a second. So we said that if you value that $200 or the, the 20,000 additional points, so to speak of the 50 K offer around $300, that's more than the statement credit, but it also requires double the spend. So it requires an extra $3,000 spend, which if your opportunity cost on that is, I don't know, two and a half percent cash back, let's say. So that's what, six ninety dollars right? And, and no, $90 and would be 3%, 3K. Don't forget to subtract out the value of the 75. points you earn from that spend though. Right, oh, that's true. So, okay, so $75 is the opportunity cost on the spend side, but you'd get 3,000 Hyatt points, so that's worth 45, so at $30. So there's a $30 difference there. So yeah, I guess still the, the points, even if, even if you valued the category one to seven start at 30,000 points, which is crazy. Like Greg said, it's not 30,000 points unless you're going to use it at a category seven. Uh, right. And even, even then it's still not as good an offer for the $200 statement credit. Right. I mean, it gets very close. It's just not, yeah. I, I, you know, if you're interested in the card and you're not looking to get elite status this year and you don't need the card this year, um, wait till, if you think you might be pursuing elite status next year, wait till next year and, um, and pick it up then if, and who knows, I mean, there probably won't be a 10 elite night benefit, but maybe there will be. Yeah. You know, and I look at it and I say, if you're interested in the Hyatt credit card, then you should probably be interested in the points in general. Uh, and, and right now I think of all times to take a one year restricted uh, free night certificate that's going to expire in a year. It's probably crazy timing on that because <laughs> you don't even know where you're going to be able to go. Right, five, three, four. You're not going to be able to really go anywhere anyway. within the United States, sure. And if you were planning to go within the United States, great. But if you were planning to go anywhere international with your category one to seven cert, then I don't know what that's going to look like next month or the month after. I don't think you're going anywhere probably next month or the month after that, or maybe not the month after that. Even in the United States right now, the way things are going, yesterday I think I saw 18 different states have restrictions on people coming in from different places, and it keeps growing the number of states that are. Who would ever thought that we'd have restrictions within the United States in terms of what states you can go to and how long you have to self-isolate and that kind of thing. Like, it's just a weird time to take, I'd say, a, a certificate that's only valid for a year. Now, he did tag on another question to it that's not really, uh, I don't think there's really an answer to it. But he said that uh, Hilton this week 
announced, and this was kind of interesting, that they're going to roll over all the nights you earn this year into next year. So if you earn any elite nights with Hilton this year, and you already have Hilton elite status, you're just rolling all that over into next year. So it's going to add up together with next year's. So he said he's wondering if there's any chance that Hyatt will do that, because if there is, then he'd want the offer with the 10 elite nights. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, I don't think they'll do that, no. I don't think so either. <laughs> Is there a chance? Of course there's a chance. Of course there's a chance. I, I, I think that's extremely unlikely. Extremely unlikely. I don't, I don't see them rolling over elite nights. I think that's, that's very unlikely. So, yeah. 50K, go for the points offer. All right, so I think that go. brings us to the goodbye song. So it thank, does. thank you to everybody who's been out there listening, following along. If you want to find out more about what we've been talking about, you want to learn more about what's going on and get all the posts as soon as they come out, go to thefrequentmiler.com slash subscribe. Again, that's thefrequentmiler.com slash subscribe. Now, if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button down at the bottom. Give us a like, give us a comment, a little bit of feedback, wherever it is you're listening and watching in. Thanks very much. Come back and see us again next week. See you then. Bye, everybody.